on myself like as a person and be like this is me it all made sense people like get inspiration from are not only dancers yeah so it, it like it's it easy for that. me to kind of draw inspiration i think we have to offer culture more than anything i okay. think just generally as a people we offer a lot that's true as in, especially in south africa people come here for vibes all the time no. And it is a walk with Mel, people. Welcome to another fabulous day. I hope that you guys had an awesome week. I'm your host, Mel Yopel, and I'm hanging out with my homeboy, Romy's in the building. Welcome to Cape Town. What's up, what's up, what's up? I've arrived finally. Man, like, and after after so many years. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I saw your Instagram profile. I mean, I know you. Yep. Don't know, know you. But I mean, your Instagram profile is quiet. I mean, it says that you're a creative mover, visual artist, and editor. But I want you to just give us a bit of an introduction of who you are. Okay, so, yeah, I'm Rome. Mm-hmm. Most days, mm-hmm. <laughs> how many creams on the same days? <laughs> um, I'm a everything really, uh-huh. Uh-huh. especially in like within the uh, entertainment yeah. artists. Um, I guess athletes as well. Mm, you're I mean, right. I do dance. Yes. And I was an athlete once upon a time. And I thank you. Uh, um, so outside of the visual artists yeah. and all that nonsense, mm-hmm. I'm just a genuine dude. You are. Yeah, that's pretty much more like. In an explanation, mm-hmm. that's yeah, everything summed up into that. Awesome. And growing up to you, would you say that you were a cool guy or a nerd? Be honest now, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, cool dude. I nerd. think I was both. Just really? a weird thing. Yeah. So okay. I'm like nerd, yes, but like my group of nerds, if you want to call them that, mm-hmm. we were, I guess, the cool nerds. Hmm. So we were like friends with every group oh, of people. Oh, but you're still like that. You're friends still, with everyone. Yeah, you're like very much. open. So there was still like the nerd nerds mm-hmm. that were like, I guess, outcasts or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then there was us who just like really didn't care about life. But because of that, I everybody kind of enjoyed our vibes. And yeah, so I guess I can fall part uh-huh. of like cool. Yeah. I can fall part hmm. of nerds. As an artist, yeah. open. Mm. So tell me, when did your journey start as a creative? Or as how creative. did it start? I mean, I say creative because you do so many things. Did it start through dance? Did it start through... um, I guess it started through watching TV. Ah, I like that. I think that's probably... Yeah, like there was always something... I just always used to love watching TV. And Mm -hmm. I think early on I started like noticing things. Mm -hmm. Especially like, okay, like cues and Mm -hmm. random things that happen. Like I always used to like dig like different visuals. And I think just generally with my imagination Mm -hmm. yeah like i could like picture a lot of stuff and my dreams became like very heavy really wow not in a bad way but it was Mm -hmm. just one of those things of like i quickly developed what they call the skill to what is it not lucid dream yeah oh yes yes yeah yeah. so i could like i could somewhat control my dreams Wow, um, that's mad though. Respect. I always wanted to do that. I'm still working on it. Yeah, I think I lost, you can do a I workshop. Now. You can do a workshop <laughs> on that someday. I'm mean, trying to get it back, yeah. but you know, it happens like every two days. Maybe. Wow. Well, I don't know. When I do decide to dream, uh-huh. and it's like, oh, I'm dreaming. Okay, cool. Let me handle this. What are we doing? Okay. Oh, <laughs> it's dancing the dream. You I know what I mean? You. And then we just kind of like set up the whole thing. So just then already, I was like starting to kind of. Mm-hmm create dreamscapes or whatever i get you yeah and then just now obviously when i'm watching tv and movies and 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 mm-hmm. and, and, and 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 obviously playing outside because we're kids yeah it's just kind of like okay cool mm. and then as i grew up it started like making more sense because i was like okay i dig this i don't like that oh. I, like this, I don't like that you know i was able to kind of just figure that out especially once i found myself like as a person and be mm-hmm. like this is me it all made sense uh. and i think that happened like late high school like that's mad though to find yourself then yeah, no, it was, I think it was much easier. Like, when I look back at it now, it, it's, I'm so happy that it happened so early in life. Yeah. Because then, like, I think it's just been easy for me to just navigate this world. Mm-hmm. Cause and what would you say, what does it mean when you say, I found myself? Does it mean, like, you know what you want to do in life? Yes, but outside of that, like, I just knew who I was and what I liked, what I didn't oh, okay. like, who I want to be, who That's I am. Spe- you were yeah. specific with what I mean, yes. I think you say. Yes, so, like, I'm just genuine that's why I'm like when I say genuine like it also like the word consistency falls in there as well mm. so the people who knew me back then and the people who know me now it's pretty much the same person uh, but in a good way not in I a way that, that I was stagnant but no I get what you're saying mm-hmm. that's dope and then I mean you're speaking about film and stuff and watching TV that's obviously the industry you went into study into yeah you did yep. film I did um, eventually yeah tell us about that journey and did you was that also one of the stuff that you knew that you want to do um 
I think at first I wanted to study like visual based graphic design. Okay. Um, because like I don't know, I just didn't know mm-hmm. what was happening within the film industry on a school okay. perspective. Because like that information was not put not out for, there. Not for me as well, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think I, if I knew, I would have jumped into it immediately. But I didn't know that much, so I was trying to get into like graphic based visual design, and like there's not a ma- there's not that many great schools. Yeah. With that as well, so I ended up studying business management while i was Same. trying to find that whole nonsense um i got so bored Same. so bored stop it because you know? <laughs> i was a bit business management yeah i got so there was bored only, i think that was the only stuff that was available to us business management accounting that kind of all stuff those things so i just yeah Any, i think i took a uh, like i first took a gap year and then the, the, the year after that i just studied that thing and okay then at the end of that year i was like yeah i'm not going back okay yeah i'm not going back and I think that was one of the best decisions I made. Wow. That was one of the best decisions I made. And then, like, later on, like, maybe I think three years later, that's when I studied film. Why? And then, mm-hmm. yeah, that kind of changed my life, kind of. Because I was already into the whole editing nonsense. Okay. When I say nonsense, I don't mean it like... I know, no, okay. we know you. We got you. We got you. Got you. Yeah, so I got into, like, I used to, like, edit and whatever, but I would never had, like, the tools. Okay. I never knew the foundation or whatever got the case was. So I was doing a bunch of stuff that I didn't understand. Mm. Not to say that I couldn't do them. I just didn't understand yeah. them. And generally, when you don't understand something, it's hard to kind of build. True. Um, so I was like, I need to study this thing because... Yeah. Clearly, and also the other thing that because I, at the time I was already a dancer, mm-hmm. what I did not like is that like on a South African perspective, yeah. like dancers have just bad, bad like, videos. Yeah, yeah, bad, so bad. But there isn't. They, that's know? not something that we have. I mean, now it's be- yeah, getting, it's getting better. better. And I mean, shout out to you guys also for doing the most for that. Mm. Um, and then I want to start, touch on the dancing. How did that start for you? Was there any inspirations there? Were you self trained? Take us through that journey quickly. I think it's everything. Um, mm-hmm. My brother used to be a dancer. Okay. And then he kind of got me into it. But he was like a all style okay. situation. Okay. He was a breaker. He, would, he did like copying, locking. Wow. At the back then, it was all one thing. I know, lock. yeah. But, Pop yeah. and lock, yeah. <laughs> Pop and lock. Yeah, so yeah, he did all of that <laughs> stuff. And he was like really good at it. Okay. Um, so generally, my brother was just good at stuff. Yeah. So I think just generally, I just picked one thing that he was good at. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I want to do that one because uh, I clearly can't do everything. Wow. Even though I tried, but mm-hmm. it just didn't work out for me. I think it was actually because I did mention I did like sports and all yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. So I did do a lot of stuff. I think and also helped with me when I found myself and whatever. Uh, it was one of those things of finding something that I'm actually passionate about. So I did a lot I of sports it. that I was I had talent in or yeah. whatever, but I just. I, it didn't give me anything. I get you. So that's like, something you're gonna wake up and yeah, do every day. Yeah, but when I got to dance, I was like, oh this snap, is this is it. Wow. And what was your first competition it. like? Um, one of your first. It doesn't okay. have to be the specific first one, but one that you can remember. I can. I'll tell you. There's two okay. specific. <laughs> there's one. Crew, there's a crew situation that yeah. happened in high school. Uh-huh. Talent show vibes. Uh-huh. Just like everybody. Yes. But yeah, um, that was tricky. <laughs> it's just tricky. It's kind of tricky. Huh? <laughs> it was legit kind of tricky. But like we had this crew that we put together. Mm. Um, it was, I think I was one of the oldest and, okay. and everyone else from like younger grades, whatever. Yeah. Um, so we did this thing um, and then we made it to the, like, obviously we had to audition and, yeah. you know, we made it to like the final day to do the nonsense and then yeah. we did it. And then I think there's a part, a part where everyone has a freestyle and then for whatever reason, one of the people in the crew decided they're going to do it not on their queue, but <laughs> on somebody else's queue. And then there was a wardrobe mishap that happened. Oh, and I was like, gosh. And this would have not happened if you went on your queue, which, yeah. But anyway, so it was just like, ah, oh, wow. Okay, cool, yeah. fine. That's done. Yeah. Number one. So number two would be um, straight off the high school mm-hmm. in my gap year. This is when essentially I became a soloist. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I did not know the dance industry at all because okay. this was, I started, I started dancing when on our side when it started like dying out okay you know so i saw that like the heydays like when masters was like huge wow. strictly was like also yeah. huge and then woof. Sure. because also i was in school parents were like yo nah, focus yeah. on school yes yes so yes. i and also i'm like i'm like i'm not outside outside i get you. so i didn't really go to a lot of the stuff mm. so it's like okay cool let me finish school then after school i'm gonna do this yeah and then like, school finishes and no, there's nothing and you're like Ooh. Where do you start? Uh. So, my that 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 gap year, I told myself I'm gonna train. Okay. Before I find a studio or a crew okay. or whatever the case may be, I'm Dope. like I'm just gonna train first. Um, cause I don't know what to do yet. Yes. Um, so I just started self training mm-hmm. for like that whole year, 
and I was like, okay, cool. So that when I do get into the industry, because technically I wasn't before, okay. I'm somewhat prepared. I get you. Clever. You know? mm. So that year, um, I tried to find competitions and whatever. Mm. Um, I found, weirdly enough, a competition called Dawnstar. Mm-hmm. I know it's just very new. I know, like, I'm, wow. I started back then, but it only really started I get you. I get recently, you. you know? Okay. Um, I think this was, like, what, 2012? Yeah. Okay. So 2012, the Dawnstar um planned the whole situation out like i was Standing. like this is my first competition and why i entered it as well was that i needed to train for like as much as i've been training at home i need to also train like my stage presence and all that stuff so gotcha. i was like okay i need to actually enter stuff yes. or do stuff to train that i got you so i was like okay let me do this thing so i got one of my friends who was a producer to mm-hmm. make me a song or a beat i guess mm-hmm. um practice that whole situation like i've never been in like competitions wow per se like yes. these formal competitions so I get this was you. A, a whole new experience mm. for me entered this thing did my thing um i flopped a lot but like they didn't know that obviously wow. yeah you would yeah. know yeah it's I, always I like knew, that it's like, always like that with all of us i didn't yeah. show it to them yeah. but i mean yeah <laughs> kept so performing I, yeah but i knew in my head i was like that was wrong yeah. that was wrong that was wrong <laughs> yeah. i missed the cue there but it's, but it's fine. fine yeah <laughs> um so cool heavy breathing get off stage um as i get off stage there's like a flock of people um just all these dance moms and like their children and whatever they mm. just all come in they're like yo that was amazing what, 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 what. sorry sorry like, what <laughs> that's something in my head i still have that thing because i flopped. must i must cue you yeah, in your yeah, mind it's like, like i, I flopped so like i know i tried to hide so they mistakes. tried to get the kids registered at your yeah <laughs> and they were like yo have you ever done workshops or whatever oh, and i'm wow. like i don't know anything because I'm like new, I just new. got you. Like I'm just like new, new into like the dance. That's amazing, though. Even when my brother was dancing, I never knew. I get you. What, like yeah, I just knew that he could dance. That's, yeah. And he had like a crew, or whatever. But I didn't know any of the mechanics. Yeah. So this is I'm like oh okay cool. I was like no, I've never done these things. Yeah. What is that? Mm. You know, <laughs> I just didn't know <laughs> nothing. And I was like wow, this is like so overwhelming. Yeah. And then cool yeah, I spoke to some people whatever 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 whatever, and then I play second. And I was like, oh wow, first competition. You're the first second. person that I heard that play. Because that's the reason I asked because I want to know the. But you like, you've got a highlight in your first <laughs> come, guys. You're hanging out with wrong people. It is a walk with me. We're taking a quick break. We're gonna talk all things CBD, the battles. We're gonna speak about your hair Situations. career. <laughs> <laughs> so don't go anywhere. <laughs> And we are back, people. It is a walk with Mel. If you just join us, we hang out with Rome all the way from Pretori. <laughs> I said that right, no? Yeah, you did. Pretori, yeah. yeah. Pretori. Visiting us here in Cape Town and in Kapstad. And I mean, we heard about your journey. Like I said, you're the first person that plays second that I heard for the first combat. I mean, you were a planner. You work your stuff out. And then I want to touch on real quick your hair. I mean, you guys can check out his Instagram. Your hair has been all the colors of the rainbow, which is so dope. And you also also do this modeling thing. I call it the modeling thing. Yeah, Photo shoot. Everybody kind of calls it the modeling and thing. And then your skin is on point. You know, the hair is on point. You spoke off the record about the skincare routine and I was in shock. <laughs> Please just share that to you. You have a skincare routine, I right? Do just a quick skin- one. Uh, yeah, uh, it's not even crazy. Because mm-hmm. I know generally skincare routines are like always like some hectic situation. Yes, yes. Um, Which is something that I just found out recently. But I, back in the day when I first started, like, taking care of my skin i used to buy this very expensive mm. um skin stuff yeah like i had a toner and like face wash moisturizer mm. and it was like i think all together was like about 1.8 yeah. so they were like very expensive. expensive yeah um they did the most for my skin but it was just hard to maintain at the of time course, um, also. yeah so then i think later on i just also once you stop using it you like break out that's hectic so, I was so it's like, almost like you have to use it yeah you know and i'm like Your skin's addicted I was like, this is, mm. this is, this is, this is And now your routine is like, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is a trap. Yeah. But anyway, so later on in life, I found like a whole situation that made more sense. So yeah. it's just pretty much having whatever face wash that you use. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously moisturizer as well. Mm-hmm. And then steaming. Like steaming, guys. Steaming. Just steaming. 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 Yeah. I love it. That's, that's all it and is. And then the hair vibes. Tell us about that. Photo shoots vibes. Modeling vibes. All in one. Yeah. So... I think it all started again. It's for me. It was one of those things that I really low, low key knew myself or whatever the case. Okay. Be. So because I knew myself, I had like a look, mm. and 
when I did my first ad, they did that look. And then after that, I see you. I, I was like, okay, this is what the industry uh, works like. So I just kind of knew that I had to kind of have some sort of a thing that makes me unique. So at the time was, because I had a Mohawk from, I think, grade 11. Like before Mohawk was a Mohawk. Yeah, yeah. So that was probably like since like 2009 or wow. somewhere around there. Yeah. But it started like low because I was in school. Yeah, it's a low mo. Are. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was like like a brush <laughs> type situation. So it was like bold yeah. everywhere else, and then this thing. This little like, thing, was, but it's there. Yeah. But it's it was a cool. thought. It, was it's a thought of, that it made counts. sense because I didn't want to break the rules. As soon as high school ended, I was like, I grow hair. Got you. Yeah, grew it, and then I started obviously making sure it makes sense. Okay. All the time, and it did. And like my friend who studied. I think oh, she studied a lot of stuff but yeah. one of the stuff that she mm. studied was just hair stuff okay so she was like yo i want to do this with you and i'm like wow. she's like i know you're specific with your hair but i'm like i am mm. it's like what exactly do you want to do she's like no she just wants to blow it out longer and i'm like all right cool okay so cool yeah we did the, the first time because i was very reluctant about it yeah um and she had already started with the whole situation just did like a young patch of blue oh. um was still in the in the whole situation and i was yeah. like okay cool am i am i gonna be able to take care of my hair when this happens mm-hmm. and then also like she was still researching black hair at the time because oh yes at because when she learned all the stuff it it's, was based on like you i know, know oh it's only now a thing now mm-hmm. yeah it's just the more recent thing mm-hmm. so then once i figured it out for myself and she figured it out on her end amazing we like okay let's just keep doing stuff and for her, because she is also low key an artist, no, actually high key an artist. She'll, high yeah, key, no, high key, yeah, high, no. key. high key an artist. But she's like, we, we click in the sense that we find art in everything. But so, I can see your work yeah, is very really so different. The first thing that we collaboration we did is I shot her photo shoot. Okay. Um, and the tagline was artists in everything. Dope. And then from there onwards, the second one, she's like, okay, you're in it now. No. So I'm not gonna use you as the videographer. You're gonna actually be the model. Amazing! And I'm like, uh, wow. Model. So dope, though. Mm. So cool. We dyed my hair, and then from there we just amazing. Started, kept dying, kept Shout dying. out to her, though. Yeah. I think that's a dope to both of you. No, mm. art is in everything. Then I'm gonna just come back to dance quickly. Experimental mm-hmm. dance battles. I saw it at CBD. Yes. Just quickly touch on that. How does that work? Because I see it overseas a lot. I don't see it a lot in South Africa. That's actually my first time seeing it at your event. Yeah. Um, just give us a bit first. of an idea of it. And because it's not like, because I mean, I saw in the battles, you also must say this battle will be without music. And I'm like, yo, then how are you going to judge this? So just give us a bit of an idea how it works. Okay. Um, experimental is everything and nothing at the same time. Um, yes, it is as confusing mm-hmm. as it sounds, <laughs> but it's just how you kind of understand it as mm. the whoever yeah be it the person watching the person doing the person judging the whatever whoever's what involved. makes you win though ah, that's tricky um like all on the day yeah i think if it's on a battles perspective yeah. like we did battles, yeah. um technique will always count okay. um, just technique of movement you know um okay. not technique of dance style yes obviously once we get to a certain stage and like the scene itself is more trained Yes. Then yeah, we can actually look at the techniques within the oh, styles. But okay. Technically, because if it had, if we had to judge experimental, the judges would have to have knowledge. I get you. On every single Makes type sense. of dance style that exists, if it doesn't exist, so you're either judging people on the okay outside of the technique, technique, creativity, yes, and everything else. Yes. Which there's there's a lot of stuff, but yeah, and everything else, but technique, creativity, then yeah. Wow. So, um. It's hard to, the problem with uh, experimentals, it's either you're judging how creative you are within a style that exists, mm. or you're judging how creative a person within, like, from scratch. I get you. So. Wow, that's heavy. So you, obviously, as a judge, you need to kind of know mm. almost everything, mm. especially on a technical basis. Of course. And being able to kind of see what's going on. I so. was so inspired. When I saw that, even being at the event, guys, I mean, you can check it out on social media as well. I mean, your footage is always on point and the event just felt so liquor. It made me just want to be there and made me want to dance. Um, tell me quickly the inspiration there for that event and what is the vision with it? Um, so initially, like, our plans for it changed very quickly. Okay. Um, but we, because we, like, generally plan yeah. a lot, um, it, it wasn't a hard to kind of readjust okay so initially we had like maybe three comps in a year Mm -hmm. just throwing a random number but it was like okay this 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 and they were all somewhat big comps okay so 
we just wanted to fill the gap because there were no i, I don't want to call them practice comps but mm -hmm. you know like those stuff that you do just before the main comp yeah. Whatever. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so there was you. none of that so we were like we're just gonna have like a frequent event mm. that happens in between all these events just mm. to kind of build up to those events amazing and then we had our first one i think we had like 20 people there mm -hmm. 26 people mm -hmm. um and then we're like all right this kind of makes sense we kind of know where we went wrong where we went right okay. and then we just kind of like okay cool let's adjust okay and then we did the second one and the second one was like poof wow I think we had like a hundred and something people at like already wow. the second one because like we just learned from everything even that first one it's cool that you kept going <clears throat> yeah i think our first one we called it um CBD volume 0 0.6 okay <laughs> was it no it wasn't even volume it it was still version yeah. okay so the v actually was version at first and okay it became volume later on so. but yeah so even we knew that that was an experiment okay that we were going to build into like an actual product Dope. or whatever Dope. Dope. yeah and then we used it as a gimmick later on like Lika. the zero point and the and then the actual numbers and whatever Lika. the case would be awesome so it was kind of cool we did so it dope. it was dope so on an experimental level it like it was something that i i just generally love it like mm -hmm. um what's this thing called creativity and all that nonsense mm -hmm. so i when i went overseas for my first competition the first time i went to an over what a competition overseas mm -hmm. the first time i went to a competition overseas uh, one of the judges was uh, an experimentalist oh, okay. or whatever and then he kind of noticed me and he was just on wow. some like they're not gonna understand what you're doing really yeah so he pretty much kind of told i didn't know it back then obviously he did say it but i didn't understand it understand obviously it was new yeah yeah uh -huh. so he was he legit told me he's like listen um learn whatever you need to learn um and then if it doesn't make sense for you there's a thing called experimental what? and then he told us his story wow um, and of how he like what he went through i think he said he started in all these styles and the last one that he stopped at was at popping and mm. he was like okay cool i learned all the stuff okay and it just doesn't make Exploring. sense for me oh. and then he was like okay let me move outside of okay. it and then he did just debut experimental that year and wow. he won it that year wow. And was like, wow that's amazing and I mean, it, it stood out to me, like it really resonated with me then. Mm -hmm. But then when I came home, I just kind of like quickly forgot. But obviously it stayed in my head. So especially in regards to being different and all that nonsense. Mm. And I was different. So I think the one thing that stayed with me is that be different. But that's the cool thing because yeah. there's a lot of different people. We're yeah. all actually, we're all different. But I mean, if if one of, say you coming back from there, you've got the guts to do it. Maybe I feel the same way. Maybe I didn't know about it. And mm -hmm. now I'm going to want to do it, you know. I want to speak about the dancing quickly, South Africa dancing. What do you think? What do we, in your opinion, what do we have to offer and what do we still have to learn? I think as people, we're still learning every day. But in the dance yeah. scene wise, what's your take on that? Just a quick one. Um... I think we have to offer culture more than anything. I okay. think we're generally, as a people, we offer a lot. That's true. As in, especially in South Africa, people come here for vibes all the nah. time. Yeah. Um, so we have that to offer. Of course. What we need to kind of mm -hmm. fix, I guess, um, for lack of a better word, yeah. is how we offer these things. Because ah. um, I think just generally, when you look at like the rest of the world, there's like a some sort of a structure that exists mm -hmm. um like in i guess your certain asian countries they focus on like if you're in a meeting with somebody like yeah. a business meeting yeah they already know that you can do the job mm -hmm. so they don't care about you pitching to them at i that get moment. you like getting to the table means that you can do you, it yes you know yes. so what they care about is the relationship now ah you know so yeah when but now in a, like your america sides it's like the complete opposite they uh, want you to woo them with the proposal i get you and they don't care about the relationship cool. to the point that when you do a job people don't say thank you sure like once you pay the person it's for that, their service that's it's done you. that's mm. it's done like and in south africa what in south say? africa it's a weird combination uh it's almost like we're still finding ourselves yeah there. so i don't know i think we just need to find a structure to be like guys this is us ah uh. um, yeah this is how we do things this is how we run business and whatever the case would be and because we've got a lot to kind of offer it's so true but we just don't know how to offer so we just always kind of take from outside uh. and it doesn't make sense for our people mm. um for example on an education perspective um our education system is based on an outside um uh, syllabus yeah or? an outside syllabus mm -hmm. if you will mm -hmm. but it doesn't work for south africa. our people for wow. south africans and that's why your zimbabwe's and whatever's have like better 
um, education systems and are producing and that has to do with identity or knowledgeable even. people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the wow. biggest. I think if we can just like structure our stuff mm-hmm. and then like kind of brand ourselves better, mm-hmm. a lot of things will make more sense. So a last few questions before we have to wrap it up. Just tell me quickly, like, because you're teaching as well. Where do you find inspiration when it comes to teaching? And then also, where, how do you fill your cup? Um, so, firstly, I trained a lot. Mm-hmm. Because um, when I first started dancing, that's what I was looking for. Uh-huh. Or when I joined a crew, that's what I was looking for. I was yes. just looking for more knowledge. Uh-huh. Because I was like, I like this dance thing, mm-hmm. but I don't know much. Yes. Um, obviously, I was coming from I was a street dancer, I guess. Yes. So, I did not know studios or whatever the case may be. I couldn't afford studios as well. So, I was just like, when I joined a crew, I was like, at least I'll get some, some stuff here. But I didn't get it. Um, I got some, but not the stuff that I was looking for. So when I left that crew, I learned. Okay. Learned, 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 learned. Got you. Then teach. Ah. Um, but even the teaching was reluctant. It's mm-hmm. Certain people were like, okay, we can see that you're doing things that kind of make sense. Mm-hmm. And you kind of know what's happening on a style perspective yeah. or whatever the case may be. And then I kind of relaxed a bit. And then I joined Kryptonite. When I joined okay. Kryptonite, they, I, like, I started off as... I was supposed to just do content okay at first and then but because maybe you teach a class I mean, every now so and then mm-hmm. you know but mainly do content and okay. then uh, a class every now and then mm-hmm. but then yeah when zoe and eugene took uh hiatus to mm-hmm. go train <laughs> 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 to fill their cups <laughs> yeah i was boom wow. thrown into the deep end whole studio with many 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 many, many people wow. but at the time i was like well into my I get it. my regiment or whatever mm. the case may be. So out like I was already like always different. So the people that I watch, the people I get inspiration from are not only dancers. Yeah. So it, it like it's easy for that. me to kind of draw inspiration because mm. I'm not looking for I'm not looking at specifically from a dance. You're very really open also man. Yes. You're very so, really open, yeah. <clears throat> so I guess I pull my cup based like on just watching stuff and just uh-huh. like Anything know, that almost inspire you. Yeah. yeah. Almost Last like, one social media, where can people catch you if they want to check the modeling pics, they want to check the, the content <laughs> <laughs> the content that you're obviously shooting um, all the time. You can get me at Rome R O M seven E, the seven is silent. Um <laughs> It's not a joke. Uh, <laughs> We're just laughing because yeah, it's but fun. Yeah. So at Rome on Instagram, at Rome on Twitter, which I never use. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my full name, Humucha Rome Solwane, on Facebook. Amazing. Yeah. Ro, it's so awesome to hang out with you and catch up with you. Thank you so, so much, guys. Thank you so wait, much sorry. for tuning wait, in. Wait, wait, yes, wait, yes, wait. yes. Um, also, at Kryptonite Dance Academy, at Kryptonite Creatives. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not getting fired. We still <laughs> want this guy to keep his job. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have it come up. We'll have it come up now for people to see. Yeah, also on YouTube, the same stuff. Yeah, um, please check yeah, it out. Cool. No, but that, now, now it's good. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure that you catch the repeat of the show next week, Wednesday at 11.30 in people. Rome is only Hello.